Hello, hello everybody. Hey to everybody over in the chat. Welcome to all the members. I see you there. Hello, good morning. Could be good afternoon, could be good evening, depending on where you are watching from. But regardless, welcome. Be sure to hit that like button and it would really help a lot if you hit that subscribe button as well on your way in. Welcome everybody. I'm Natalie. This is Scientology Life After a Cult where we talk about the Scientology news that has the internet buzzing. We also talk about my 35 years in Scientology and leaving with three generations of my family. And many days of the week, I do interviews with people in the ex-Scientology community. They could be someone protesting or live streaming or somebody sharing their Scientology experience. So be sure when you hit that subscribe button that you set your notification bell to all so you can get a notification when I do those interviews because I love doing them and sent sharing people's stories. And this week I have some great ones coming up that I am very excited about. And I hope you guys can catch them live. And if you don't catch them live, catch it on the replay. If you're catching this on the replay, go ahead and shout out in the comments where you're watching from, what your thoughts are, any questions that you have. I try to get to the comments. I don't get to all of them, but I'm telling you, it's like every time I have a spare moment, it's, oh, let's go answer some comments. <laughs> I appreciate it. And I appreciate all of you who email me, natalie at lifeafteroccult.com and send me clips from things you see on the internet that you find interesting as it relates to Scientology, Scientology news. If you send me a link to a video, just go ahead and put a timestamp there and tell me what I'm looking for or what I'm looking at. And if you send a clip, same thing, just say kind of like what it basically is about there. Thank you so much for doing that. I also want to thank my mods. I know that Nancy is here today and my Tony is going to be popping in in a little bit. We have a lot to cover in Scientology news in the recap. We are going to talk about multiple things, but some, I'm going to start off with some news that's going to remind us why we do this and why we are here. And we're going to jump into some things that have been happening in Cal in California for protests, including Burbank and Pasadena, and plus, of course, Hollywood. We're going to take a look at New York, Chicago, St. Louis, Clearwater, Austin, even Kentucky, where I'm a little confused by the org name. Maybe one of you can just can explain it to me. And of course, we cannot forget Vancouver. And I do believe that we even have a clip from Geneva. So these Scientology protests are growing from all over. Even look at that. We got Perth Scientology audit in the house all over. It's no longer just this country. It's spreading to all over the place. And I can't lie. It's fabulous. I absolutely love it. Now we're going to take a look at a video from, I think it was yesterday. It was very recent. And this is super interesting. Jeff Augustine shares a Hubbard letter about making Scientology a religion. You've probably heard Erwin Hubbard has been quoted a lot as saying, oh, you know, if you really want to make money, you got to start a religion, this whole religion angle. Well, Jeff Augustine brought the receipts the other day and shared something that uh, is a letter to Helen O'Brien. This is in 1953, and it is from L. Ron Hubbard. And interesting, here's the real interesting thing, Scientology has not denied that this is, in fact, a letter written by L. Ron Hubbard. Often when these things come out, they'll come out and they'll like deny, 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 right? But nope, nope, it seems to hold water. So let's take a little look and a listen at this. Scientology does not dispute this, and that's important. I'm going to read the letter. This is Hubbard writing, quote, we don't want a clinic. We want one in operation, but not in name. Perhaps we could call it a spiritual guidance center. Think of its name, will you? And we could put in nice desks and our boys in neat blue with diplomas on the walls and one, knock psychotherapy into history and two, make enough money to shine up my operating scope and three, keep the Hass solvent. The HAS was the Hubbard Association of Scientologists. It was the membership organization for all Scientologists. Because by that time, Dianetics had become Scientology. Okay. And Hubbard goes on, it is a problem of practical business. I await your reaction on the religion angle. Uh, repeat, I await your re re reaction on the religion angle. Scientology does not dispute this. And that's important. I'm going to read the letter. 
How crazy is that? He says, I await your reaction on the religion angle. In my opinion, we couldn't get worse public opinion than we have had or have less customers with what we've got to sell. And you've heard this where L. Ron Hubbard figured out that the whole like, you know, he could, if he could make this a religion, it could be so much bigger and you could make so much more money. So there you go. There you go. I don't think that I have seen that before. I think I have heard of it. So I really appreciate that Jeff Augustine has brought that to the forefront. Link down below to all the videos that we're going to be talking about here. So you can check them all out. Now, let's take a look at this link from Rachel Bernstein or Bernstein. I'm sorry about the pronunciation there. Detoxing from Scientology with Tammy Sinovic, I believe is her name. She left Scientology her story. It is well worth a listen to the entire video. I'm going to send a, share a clip. Little, what the palette a little bit, just give you a little taste, but it is, it's, it's interesting and it's heartbreaking like most Scientology stories, but let's go ahead and take a little look and a listen at just a part of it here. This McPherson thing was the first thing. And then, and then I think one other thing about when I first came back also is there was a, a lot of the staff members, kids work there. And I want to make sure that I tell that part. Um, and maybe we can pick up on that next time, but that they worked there and that they were underage and they were not being schooled, that that violates labor laws. And what happened was that the office, the director of special affairs would show me, Hey, there's state laws and there's federal laws and the federal laws are more strict than the state laws, but we have to follow the federal laws. And I thought, okay, fair enough. You know, I thought, well, that was good. At least we're, but it was like, they were allowed to work for at a certain age, you're allowed to work, whatever the laws are. Oh, you're allowed to work like four hours a day. And these kids were there and they were working, you know, they were working, they were doing stuff for me. They were helping stuff envelopes. Yeah, there is no shortage of stories and information, yet it needs to be heard again and again and again because there are many new eyes coming on, coming into this movement of exposing Scientology and raising awareness that it is a cult, why it is a cult, why people call it a human trafficking cult, why children have no place in Scientology and children cannot consent either to Scientology being used on them. It, it's just so much more about why why that is. There are a million reasons, truly. And speaking of kids, Confident Chris was over by Applied Scholastics in Hollywood and ran into somebody who's there. He, he kind of was asking the question of who's teaching the kids? Because if you remember, when he was out there before, uh, it was actually Chris without a Hellcat was there and he called Applied Scholastics and was like, hey, aren't you part of Scientology? And they were like, no, 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 no. We are not part of Scientology. Forget that it has L. Ron Hubbard's name right on the window. <laughs> and we know that it's part of Scientology, run by Scientology, run by Scientologist. So they are never, never, uh, never quite getting their story straight on that. But let's take a look at what Confident Chris was looking at when he ran into somebody outside this applied scholastics in Hollywood. In a scooter? No way you get in a scooter. All right, there, he's putting money on the meter. No, because he just seen that he, he's going to look at us like, what the hell? That's a Nissan right there. Hey, Solomon is my son. No, don't ask no, nothing, Solomon. So he had just locked up the Applied Scholastics office. And then it did appear that he was actually trying. I'm not, I don't think he was trying to root, rent a scooter or was he? Because we remember what happened with the last Scientologist with a scooter who tried to run down Danny and then falsely claimed that he tried to steal the scooter and had Danny put in jail over this. So was this Scientologist trying to rent a scooter to run down Confident Chris or was he just videotaping Confident Chris trying to be sly about it? I want to see him go back in there. That's all. He's spying on us, spying on him.
it looks like he's on the phone and he's likely being directed on what to do. Usually they, you know, don't make their own decisions on this, but know who to call in Scientology when protesters show up, especially if they've been there before. Yes, Afila, fake scooter tech, fake scooter tech. Maybe he thought, maybe he thought, you know what? I'm just going to make it look like I'm getting a scooter. That will scare them off. That will scare off those young people. We're not messing around with scooter tech in Scientology. Did they learn nothing from what ha- by what happened before? Protesters have been followed around by elderly Scientologists scooting, pushing along scooters. It's the weirdest thing, but okay. That's not weird. <laughs> That's not weird or culty at all, is it? No, let's do that. Okay, something else that was disturbing to see, and this actually... Many things break my heart in Scientology, but specifically when it involves children and the elderly. It's, you know, we know Mike Brown here on YouTube. If you don't already subscribe, head over to his channel. He shares his mother Rosemary's story. And so it has really brought to the forefront the elder abuse that's occurring within the Sea Organization. And in Scientology, we see so many very elderly people. And this is because there aren't an influx of new younger Scientologists. Most of them that you will see, I would argue, are probably easily over 60, the vast majority. And some of them in the Sea Org are just getting older. And the concern is they're not getting the care that they need and that they should have. So let's take a look at this. This was on DOA stream, but it's Lara FM who is talking to a, what looks like a Sea Org member pushing an elderly man who may or may not be a Sea Org member himself. So take a look and a listen at this. People that are trying to leave Scientology and we know that a lot of people are mistaken on the, in the Sea Org and on staff that think it's like, oh, we're trying to attack and all that. We're not. We're here to help people that are being like manipulated, so to speak, and think, oh, my God, the OT levels are amazing. And they're not. They're made up. They're Xenu and all the warlord and the volcano and all this. That Look at her being so crazy, pushing you as fast as she can. I used to be a CERG member. I was an ethics officer. I was an MAA. I used to write ethics programs. In Clearwater for all the OTAs, Grant Cardone. I'm not kidding, man. Why? And my dad is washing dishes in the lower building of this freaking building. And he's been in the Sea Org. He was at Gold Base International Headquarters that was making all the event films. Notice the video is a little blurry, but I swear it looks to me like the guy is turning his head towards Lara FM and is actually listening, even though the CR member pushing him is just keeping her blinders on. He was, he won't talk to me. Tell me in the chat or in the comments what you think. I'm a declared SB because I chose to be a singer and an artist. It's amazing. I was born and raised in this freaking organization that I wouldn't have dared to call a cult. And now I'm calling it a cult. Look at her. She's so, she can't, she has to keep her TRs in because she's like, oh my God, these SPs, you know? But you're old enough, man. And before you, you know, pass away, I just want you to know the truth. You heard it from me, man. You heard it from me. My whole family disconnected from me in the Sea Org. I was born and raised in it my whole life. I'm now officially a declared SP and I don't give a shit. I love it. I'm fucking as happy and free as I could ever be. And I want people inside. See, she's pushing you away from me. She's saying, oh my God, I can't believe I even allowed all that to go in your beautiful ears. We love you out here. Please contact your family out here. Like you should be being taken care of 100%, not just by these like golden little rules that you know, but the whole world wants to hear your story, just like mine. Oh, I'm so happy I said, oh my God, guys, I'm so happy I just said all that. Yeah, he heard it. He heard it. I think you guys agree as well. He heard it. And the weird thing to me is I don't know where they came from with the wheelchair because it's he could either be a C organization member or he could be a public individual who is getting auditing who then needs to go and get something to eat because where they're headed was the canteen area. But see, back in my day, there's an, a better way to get there. You can get there through the buildings and go down the elevator so he doesn't have to go down the stairs and you don't have to carry the wheelchair. So it's unless that changed since my day 
where now public have to go around. But when I was there, you could go straight through the blue buildings to get there. So I don't know quite what that was about or where they headed somewhere else. And the Sea Org member, because Lara was making like a really good point and using a lot of love there too, go the other way and get away from it. But yeah, both heard. I agree. I agree. Both people heard her. He was definitely listening. I think so too. And it is a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. That was great to see. All right, let's jump over to Pasadena where MD Media 18 is outside there protesting and live streaming. And the really cool thing is people are getting the message that Scientology is a cult. They know this and they know about it through multiple channels and sources. It could be here on YouTube. It could be Leah Remini's Scientology Aftermath. It could be Going Clear. It is so many ways that they're finding out, but they're very aware, many are, of the protests that are happening around the country. A lot of them are finding out about it on TikTok, but they know and they are not afraid to say. Check this out. Don't do it. Don't, don't do it. Please don't do it. These are all survivors. They all left so the Church of Scientology, so... We're out here protesting here and all over the United States and the world. Cool. Yeah. Keep it real. Right on. I appreciate that. Okay, I was in an organization which it wasn't. Don't worry, I don't have you on film. So I'm oh. live right. I'm live right now. So I don't. I don't have you on film. Oh, but I'm not. Okay. Yeah. You no, know, I don't have you on film at all. So okay. I, re I respect people's privacy. There it is filming. Yes. 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 Okay. My, pers my protection as well, because these people are oh, fair game, and they'll. I think it's stuff. about, I think it's, okay, I don't need a nasty, but I think being involved when you, uh, any information, I don't mind. Yeah, whatever you got. Oh, yeah, well, no. He has a great conversation with him, link down below to the full video, but I just find that fascinating. People already know and they want to share what they know too, or they want to share their stories about almost being dragged into Scientology by a friend, by a family member, through a personality test, through somebody that they were dating. It really is incredible how many near misses there are of people who almost got into Scientology and are so glad that they didn't. Some who went in and had their own experience early on, but then immediately left. And you know what? I guarantee you, Scientology still counsels people as Scientologists. I think if you bump into the door, at a Scientology org, they count you as a Scientologist. Maybe you have to actually cross the threshold, but you have to be invited in. <laughs> Despite their signs that say everyone is welcome. It should be everyone is welcome, except for anybody who would like to question anything about Scientology or bring up any of our possible abuses. You are not welcome. <laughs> I guess it would be a long sign. Maybe I'm judging them too harshly. Let's jump over to Burbank where Dan Walks LA. Dan Walks LA is new on the scene with protests. He was out there during the billboard fiasco. He's been out protesting with Lara FM, Mindy as well. And he was over at Burbank. And while he was there, a guy comes over and takes a picture of his sign, but only wants a picture of one side. It was an interesting interaction. The guy then went into the Scientology building. But what I can't figure out is, is this guy a Scientologist or new who wanted a picture of all the ads on YouTube to look and check it out later? Or is this a guy who was just taking it to show it to Osa on the inside as if they don't already know? Because he didn't want to take a picture of the front of the sign or the clear cognition sign. I don't know why. I don't know why he wouldn't want to take that. <laughs> But let's check it out. This is Dan Walks LA, I believe over in Burbank. Sure. Something to read. Thank you. Appreciate it. Took a photo and then went in. Interesting. Something to read, he goes. Something to read. Bullshit. He's going to go and share that with Osa right now. Yeah. 
Thank you, guys. First weird encounter of the day. It's okay. I showed, he, he didn't want to see this one or, or this. <laughs> I just love that he's there shaking it up, hitting some different Scientology organizations. But what was the deal, right? Because the guy's got to know too, if you're a Scientologist and you want to like get a little snap of that, so you can go look it up later on the internet, that this is being live stream on the internet and that Scientology might see you doing that right before you walk in. Or maybe he just doesn't care. Or maybe he is going in and turning it into OSA, but they already know. They already know. It's just interesting to me, and I'm not quite sure how to read that. So you guys tell me in the comments or the live chat, what's the deal? Do you think he was a Scientologist thinking about escaping or a Scientologist that was going to report? Because he specifically said the back of the sign, just the back of the sign. He didn't want to see the clear cognition or about Scientology's tax exempt status. And the back of the sign had all the ads on YouTube. Hopefully, he just wants to share it. Maybe he's going to go post it on some other social media and be like, hey, here's some great reading to do about Scientology. That would be great. I would like to believe that one. Now, we're going to go take a look at New York where there's there are more people showing up to protest Scientology in New York, and it's right off of Times Square. Skyrider, Skyrider 140. This is from her stream in New York, educating and un, and educating people about Scientology. And this is really interesting because they got this girl who looked like she was going to go in there brand new and it looks like they got her not to go in. But let's take a look. This is in New York where it's so cool to see more people showing up out there to protest Scientology. Check it out. Do you have a minute to answer a few questions about Scientology? I have some questions. I've never been here. Oh, oh you've go? never been? Are you going in? Why did you go in? I don't know. It's just a museum. No, uh, it's no, not. it's really not just a museum. It's just a museum. Now, we've heard Scientology recruiters in Hollywood tell people, oh, it's like a movie. Oh, it's a party. Oh, it's Shakira uses it and is into it. And I even think they use that museum line as well. So, it seemed like she knew right where she was going. Like maybe this was scheduled before for her to come and show up. So I don't know. Maybe there's some confusion about it, you know, it being a different building. But uh, it's interesting. Check it out. You can go in, but you have to plan for three hours inside. They won't let you leave before you buy a book, watch a movie. They're going to hard sell you when you go in there. I mean, just make your own yeah, yeah. Happy Saint Patrick's Day. Sir, do you have a few questions? Uh, do you have a minute? Sir, do you have a minute to answer? Dude comes out. Ooh, he is not happy that this girl is out there. And you know what they like to do in Scientology? Whisk you back in. Whisk you away from those protesters. But she is not having it. A few questions about Scientology. Do you have a few minutes? Can you answer some questions? Yeah, that guy was so upset that we changed your mind that he had to come out and be pissy about it. Yes. Very, very telling. I mean, and, and think about it, right? It's funny to watch because they're stopping her from going in. But really, truthfully, honestly, they literally saved this girl's life. If she would have gone in and become a part of Scientology and actually stayed and gone through the indoctrination and the brainwashing and become disconnected from her family, it is a whole domino effect of misery. And she was stopped from doing that. And Ren, exactly. Where's your comment go? Revolving door tech. They do have that in New York at that org. It's the only one I've seen with a revolving door that I'm aware of, and I love it. Revolving tech work is strong in New York. You can go in, boom, come right out. Going in, boom, come right out. <laughs> that was so interesting to me. And well done, you guys in New York for doing that and being on it. Anna says, someone saved me by stopping me from taking a personality test. <gasps> oh, Anna, can you knowing what you know now? How much does that freak you out? Oh, would totally freak me out. 
totally freaked me out. Hey, Smooth Steve. Steve is Smooth Steve SPTV in New York. He is there as well. I think he's one of the first ones that I started sharing about from New York. So great to see you guys out there with your signs and doing what you're doing. And you're obviously making an impact. People know Scientology is a cult and more. Those that don't are learning and they're finding out. They are finding out. We got another clip from New York where Smooth, speaking of Smooth Steve, Smooth, Smooth Steve NYC shows how people know Scientology is a cult. Let's take a little look at that again. This is New York again with that revolving door. Some new tech, although Scientologists are starting to catch on that things are being said that they might not want to hear. And we have some new tech to share. Are you listening to We Stand Tall? You ever been audited by a child? You ever been audited by a child? We stand tall, no turning back, they'll find the way. We stand tall. Dude. You'll notice the guy was wearing earbuds and wanted to be very obvious about it. I can't hear you. I've got earbud tech. I can't hear you. I've got earbud tech. He, he, was, using, he was using earphone. That was earphone tech. That was earphone tech. <laughs> they are powerful people. All right. Thank you, sir. That's Thank you. Thing. We got a thumbs up. <laughs> they know. They know. Oh, it's pink. I like that. That's awesome. Great sign. If you want to get rich, you start a religion. L. Ron Hubbard. Just love seeing so many people out there with Steve protesting, educating along the way. It's just fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Then there was there. You know what? We got one more, I think, from New York where there were, a passerby shared a bizarre run in with the C organization. And this is what I mean. Not only now are protesters out there stopping people from joining Scientology and educating neighbors and people who might not know about Scientology, why it's a cult and what their tactics are. People are coming up to protesters all around because I've heard from multiple people sharing their escape stories, their, their near escape stories, or their bizarre encounters with Scientology. And that's what this young lady did as well. And this is in New York. Check it out. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, okay, so we come out of the movie. It's like almost midnight. And just, let's say it's buses and buses and buses. Yeah. I don't know if you can hear. It's kind of quiet. But she's talking about coming out of a movie at midnight. This start pulling up and like the parking lot was empty and we were just staying there with our dad watching like the, what are the, they call like drone people like the ones who see or have no money yeah oh you see or um, yeah. and they were all walking in and my dad was like oh my god this is like so insane and genius because it's too late for a camera crew to get out here from any of the news stations and it was opening the weekend and to talking to police so she's talking about being at a movie theater late I think it was like a midnight showing of a Tom Cruise movie, if I'm hearing correctly. And Smooth Steve, you could probably fill in as well. Um, and that they, uh, all these Sea Org members were getting off the bus to go to the movie really late because in the Sea Organization, that is one of the only times where Sea Org members were taken to movies like that, uh, especially in recent years, would be if they were going to see a Tom Cruise movie or back in the day, like Battlefield Earth or something like that. So, I thought it was interesting. Uh, Tom Cruise. Oh. Yes. Oh, yeah. Right. Wow. So, but they needed to hide them away, essentially, from the rest of the public. So they, like the Sea Org members, is what I'm saying. They bust them in very late. They did that because it was too late to get, like, a camera crew there from a news station. News so station. Right. Happened. It's insane. Yeah. No, they don't hide them. Yeah. Right. They totally hide Sea Org members away. We know this. We see it. We've been seeing it all the time. I think, uh, it's getting, it, it's, there's at some point where you're out there and you're protesting like, you know, early on and it's like, oh, what is it? What is it? And you still get that. But I am just loving that so many people are stopping and sharing what they know about Scientology. And a lot of them too are just kind of like, oh, you know what? We, they don't even care if they're on video or not. Some do, some do, but it is interesting what is coming out of people's mouths. Now let's take a little look. Where is this? We are going to go look at Chicago.
I do believe this is Chicago Scientology audit. This is Shannon. She was out there and uh, Windy City, Thetan Watch shows up. They're just out there just doing such hard work. It is cold there in Chicago. It looks like it got colder than when my Tony and I were there a couple of weeks ago. But uh, check it out. My, my son, Ben, loved that show, that movie. Watched it over and over and over. Look who's here. I'm so glad you're here. Need help leaving. And love the sign. Need help leaving Scientology. Call us. The Aftermath Foundation number. Money, therapy, training, help and care available. Scientology. Call us. Is that the aftermath? Money, therapy, training, help and care available. Very good. Hi, Windy City. Okay, man. Just love it. And am I glad you're here. Stand for humanity, crimes of Scientology, human trafficking, child abuse, sexual abuse, family disconnection, elder abuse, financial fraud. The signs are just awesome. <laughs> just love that. So thank you. Thank you to all you guys that are out there doing this and protesting and everybody who helps to send me clips, Natalie at lifeafteroccult.com. Just make sure you put a timestamp in there or a clip and tell me what I'm looking at. We're going to look at something a little eerie over in St. Louis, which I'm like, what is this about? I'm going to be talking to St. Louis Scientology Audit, who is uh, Louis Rapetto. He and I did a video a few days ago where he shared some very disturbing techniques, mind control techniques that Scientology uses. If you have not seen that video, go back there. In fact, I'm going to give you guys a little bit of homework. Specifically, if you haven't seen it, I really want you to watch the interview I did with Louis Rapetto and the interview I did, I think it was the previous week with Blow Drill with Dylan Gill, because both of them are going to be on again this week, and we're going to pick up where we left off. And what, what Lewis shared about the mind control techniques used, because he was a trained Scientology interrogator, I'll warn you in advance, might give you a little bit of nightmares, but it needs to be known, because we often talk about Scientology and their mind control and all that, but really laying out what it is, what it looks like, could even help someone who's not even in Scientology, but another high control group. Because the mind control techniques are similar. L. Ron Hubbard codified his own. He put his own stink on some techniques on doing it, but there's some similarities that you guys might see and go, oh my gosh, I'm in a cult. Or I was, or hey, so-and-so has been doing that on me to try and gaslight me. Incredible info, but Louis Rapetto and I are going to chat again this week. I just forget if it's Tuesday or Wednesday, but hit that notification bell when you subscribe so you get those notifications and you will know because it was great. But you got to see this video out of Scientology in St. Louis. This was weird. And I'm going to have to ask Louis too about the, um, about the building setup. Because this is just weird. This is L. Ron Liar 91, who I do believe is new or at least new to me. Check this out. Oh my God, they got the doors chained shut. Look at that. The front doors are chained shut. You can't even get in the building. Look at that. The front concrete's all jacked up. The front door. I gotta get a picture of that. That's awesome. The front doors are chained up. That is awesome. <laughs> so nobody's coming out that front door. It's just weird. Why is the front door chained? Obviously, they're going in a different way. They must be. But why chain the front door? That's like, it looks so weird. And then you have the Scientology sign out there. And I know, I know what you're saying. Natalie, Scientology is weird. That's why it looks weird. I know. I guess I just keep having, like, I'm so disappointed in their incompetence. The broken doors, the chain doors. But let's just put it out there for everybody to see. I thought that too, Pearl Snappy. Fire hazard. How many other entrance or exits are there in that building? It's weird. It's weird, right, Steve? Creeptastic. It just makes no sense, like many things in Scientology. But speaking of Louis, Louis Rapetto, who we were just talking about, he was at St. Louis protesting. And you might remember we shared a clip where he ran into his old friend, Jerry. 
Jerry was in the C organization, still is for decades. And he had a whole conversation with Lou that was mind boggling because the guy was just spilling the tea. I don't know where he thought Lou was or where he'd been. He obviously didn't know that he was a declared suppressive person, but it would seem that somebody clued him in because his next interaction was, I don't know, I guess you might say it was just a little bit icy. <laughs> like someone clued him in like, Hey, that conversation you had for 30 minutes or whatever out there with that guy, where you told him all about our teams that are going and coming back and what we're behind on and what's happening and what we're doing. He live streamed the whole thing and he is a declared SP. So he got, uh, he definitely caught on some include him in, but check this out. They're outside of that chain front door building. Here's a friend coming Cadillac. Go, go, science ho. Go, go, science ho. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Sisberry. Jerry? Barry, Jerry. Jerry. He's mad at me, guys. <laughs> he is definitely not nice looking like he was last time. Yeah. Bye, Barry. He's mad. Jerry. So we can see his license plate CZ0A3. He is mad. He caught on. He found out. And I, I would bet, I would bet if I were a betting person, which I am, <laughs> that he has got some conditions, some lower conditions in Scientology. They're called lower conditions where you have to make amends to the group and beg to be asked back in. And you have to take around this little piece of paper that says approved or disapproved. Cause you have to say, Hey, read the crappy stuff I did, but look at what I did to earn your trust back in the group. Please let me back in the group of Scientology. I'm telling you, there's no way he's not doing something like that because he just totally spilled the beans the other day. And Louis Rapetto handled it so well. He had a really nice conversation with the guy and the guy just opened up. I don't know what he was thinking. I really don't. I know that I'm telling you, Danessa, I didn't get it. He thought they were just hanging out outside the org. He should have realized they were protesters, right? Yeah. But then again, Jerry is a Scientologist who's also a Sea Organization member. He is not on the internet. He is not watching television. He doesn't have exposure to the outside world that way. So I don't know. Maybe he'd never seen protesters out there and no one had told him. Scientology is full of one side of the organization not knowing what the other side is doing. Ooh, silly squirrel. You're so right. St. Louis looks like an old insane asylum. Quick check says it was used for public health care facility. I'm going to dig into that later today. Ooh, email me, Natalie at lifeafteroccult.com. Ooh, old, it does look like an old insane asylum. That is interesting. I would love to hear that history. Weird. Hey, Charlotte, so glad you made it for a live. All right, let's go over to Clearwater. Because we got some talking to do about Clearwater. Uh, Feral Cheryl. This is Feral Cheryl's video. And she's talking to Poe on the go. You can find both of them here on YouTube. And Lori Plays is there as well. So be sure to follow, subscribe. Because they are tearing it up in Clearwater. And sharing about what is happening with Scientology. Talking to Scientologists. More so having Sea Org members run away from them and hide. But Sometimes the Scientologists talk to them, especially Lori Plays. She's had real success with that. Free Xenu Project. Thank you so much for becoming a member. Hip, hip, hooray. Love that. Okay, so let's take a look at Feral Cheryl's video. And pay close attention, my friends, because Poe on the go, who is there in Clearwater, is being followed. Who might be following him? And if you thought, well, maybe it was just a coincidence, one car, I don't know, right? Could it really be happening? Listen to this. You got to listen to this. Yeah, folks, listen to this. We we left out. I noticed this white Jeep Cherokee was blocking the exit to the parking lot. I put my hand out and I waved down and let them know they could come by. They did that, and then they immediately whipped around to the exit themselves, mm -hmm. waited till we passed, came out behind us, and I noticed that if I turn left, they turn left. Mm -hmm. If I would switch from the right-hand lane to the middle lane, they immediately did so. So then I started cutting up side streets, and they would 
come up the side streets right behind me and why don't they every do that to me i feel so left out well, me too and then i noticed we had a second car that was following them a little uh foreign compact car Holy with crap. really bright headlights because when the jeep would lose me then the the, the little car would start following me and <laughs> finally i just started driving up all these side streets making all these weird turns <laughs> how crazy is that he goes on full video down below to the link. Go watch it. Watch the whole thing. They're doing great things there in Clearwater. It's so fun. It's so fun. And yes, Afila, that's Poe on the go, an ex-cop. Lori Plays is also former law enforcement. So I think it's in their nature to pay attention to those kinds of things as well. Right? Hunter Bay, his copy sense. Yes. Absolutely. That's so great. Follow tech fail. <laughs> yeah, it is. It, you know, there was a time, I feel almost like this, almost like calm, sad music should be starting right now. There was a time in Scientology where their stalking and follow game was a bit more on point. <laughs> it is not. It is not. Scientology, you are hiring lazy PIs. This is not good work. If you were going to have a PI follow somebody who worked in law enforcement, you just got to get smarter about it. I mean, come on, Scientology. This whole idea that you follow people and you're this big, bad, scary organization, that is going by the wayside. Not only are people not caring, they're inviting it. <laughs> like Lori Place, why aren't you following her? <laughs> fail, fail, fail. Reminder, everybody, hit that like button while you are here. While you are here. Oh, and Clearwater. We were going to talk Clearwater. So, uh, sorry, I'm just debating like on the fly if I'm going to share this now or not. We, well, I'll tell you what we're working on. We are working on going to Clearwater. My Tony and I are working on it. I will let you know when we finalize some dates. But I just have to meet everybody. And this will be my first time back to FLAG. The That's the organization where I've done services at. Just like in the blue buildings in Ellen Harvard Way in California, which is where I was in the Sea Org at and did my upper Scientology levels on the bridge to total freedom. I did that in Los Angeles, but I did a bunch of auditing in Florida too at Flag. I did it at Flag. I went to Flag. Well, I'm going to go back to Flag. And I'm bringing my Tony with me. How fun to bring the love of my life to the scene of the crime, if you will. <laughs> in many ways. Working on it. We'll keep you guys posted on dates and all that, but we are doing our best to get there. Okay. Where are we? Where are we? Where are we? We have so much. Okay. Let's go to Austin. Let's see. Oh, that's right. Pearl Snappy. Austin is a great place to visit. Girl, don't think it's not on my list. <laughs> it totally is. It totally is. We're going to be um, squeezing in some traveling as much as we can to make this happen, to, you know, lend our voice to. And it's, it's, I meet so many people online and do interviews and chat with them, but being there in person, and we had such a great time protesting Scientology in Chicago that I think it'd just be fun to do all over the place. We're going to have to fly because that's going to be too far to drive, but there are some other locations nearby that we're looking at visiting as well. So keep an eye out for that news, but uh, yeah, Clearwater, we are going to be headed there. All right, let's take a look at Austin. Speaking of Pearl Snappy, Pearl Snappy, we got to talk about this. Jay was there. Denver Scientology Audit showed up in Austin. Worlds were colliding. Oh, my goodness. It was so great. I loved seeing this, seeing you guys come together. I wish I had a better shot of you guys together. Pearl Snappy, if you guys got a pick together, can you send it to me? I would love to throw it up on a, a future um, thumbnail or something. But Pearl Snappy's walking down the street in Austin, and then you hear the voice, because if you follow Denver Scientology Audit, if you follow Jay, who protests outside the Denver org there, there is no mis there's no mistaking that voice. It's, it's like the kind of voice like, uh, you know, you recognize Darth Vader's voice, <laughs> except much more pleasant, and you actually feel good when you hear it. It doesn't feel like Darth Vader. But let's check this out. What's up, y'all? Hey, 
That's what's up. I heard we had a guest, so I had to make my way down here as soon as possible. I see the big green hat. When she said, I see the big green hat, I was like, oh, could that be Jay? Because Jay had that big green hat at the parade in Denver. Let's, let's get her a little closer here. Here we go. Hey there. You too. Thank you for coming out here. Hell yeah. Uh, I wasn't going to just let you stand here with these closed up windows by yourself. I know. It, it was crazy because it was all over. That's like, what they do every time we're here. Like the first five minutes we were As soon. Like, um, as yeah. soon as. Sometimes you can't even go live, yeah. I, I like before. I wasn't even, uh, prepared mentally or anything. I, I just walked up and I was like, "Whoa, oh, it's open!" Like, right. I could see everything. Yeah. Uh, and then they, oh, there's Tanya. There's our girl Tanya. Oh, you know them by name. Oh yeah. Right? Nice, nice. Oh, so the, the she's kind of been like a younger Hispanic. She's got yeah the blonde the, or the long dark brown curly yes, hair. Yes. So she's married to Corbin. How great is this? I don't know about you guys. I was completely geeking and fanning out over this. Pearl Snappy and Jay from Denver Scientology Audit together. And okay. and Corbin and his brother Barton use. Okay, this is awesome because she's explaining to him the tea about these people in Austin behind those doors and their financial crimes and others. Listen to this story if you have not heard it, even if you heard it. She gives more details. It's their student loan money to help pay for this building and gave it all to a guy named John Davitt. Stacy's mother, or Trace, Stacy is her mother in law, Stacy Springer. She's a big whale here. Wow. Okay. And her, she was married to a guy named Tracy. Tracy slept with Stacy's 14 year old sister. Then they decided to put like send her away to go get executive training until the statute of limitations ran up. And then once that was done, he came the Sheila, the 14 year old at the time, came back here when she was 17. And now she's married to Tracy and Stacy's married to somebody new. So that's what that family, that girl uh, came are. into. And you are going to want to probably go back and listen to that again. Because it is just full of tea that is completely true that what Scientology did to this child, not to mention the guy who took his student loan money and gave it to Scientology, it's crazy. It's just crazy. It's crazy, but it's true. Aaron over at Growing Up in Scientology did a whole video about it. And Pearl Snappy has been sharing the truth, even on a bullhorn sometimes, which is specifically uh, kind of a nice way to do it, outside of that um, Austin organization and sharing it. It's crazy. I know, right, Viber? What did I just hear? I'm telling you. I'm, th this is why sometimes you guys, if you can, you got to watch the whole video. My clip that I do does not do it justice. There's so much gold in there. We could be here all day going through stuff. Really, we can. It's fantastic. Fantastic. But yeah, Pearl Snappy, that was so awesome that you and Jay were there. I loved it so much. I loved it so much. Let's go take a look at this. Okay, this is funny. This is also in Austin, and this is by the Cult of Scientology, Cult with a K, here on YouTube. This is a channel that is new to me. And this is just a little funny that this person found when they were walking by. Always cracks me up, this kind of stuff. Check it out. Austin PD has possibly gone full operating Thetan. Hey, check this out. <laughs> this guy is OT8. Holy shit. We're too late, people. It's OT8 on Austin PD. Son of a bitch. Wrap it up. OT8. See, he's he's at the highest level. This guy is highest level, highest level, man. He's an OTOG eight. I love too how you can hear the protesters in the background yelling over at the organization there. But I thought that was funny. That cracked me up. I love seeing stuff like that. What I also love seeing are people in love who protest together. And that is that is a Declare Dave Love Suppressive Sherry. That is the name of their YouTube channel. And this is where I get confused, people. I'm going to pull this up for you. And we need to have a quick talk about what is happening here. Because I don't understand. And it might be somebody in the ex-Scientology community who might understand 
this craziness. Why is it? Okay, it is the Greater Cincinnati Org, but it's in Kentucky. Is there a Cincinnati, Kentucky? And I'm just unaware of that. Um, I'm not quite understanding the name of the org, and that's not so much a big deal about this story, but for me, I'm confused about it, and I want to kind of understand that. So if you do understand why it's that way, I guess I could have Googled it, Googled it too, but it was a busy morning. Oh, hey, okay, you tell me, declared Dave Love Suppressive Sherry. What is the deal? Is, it, it's, is there a Cincinnati in Kansas? Like, what's the deal with the name? I don't understand it, but uh, I'm going to play the clip first, and then I'm going to look for your answer because it's strange. And I'm just saying, I love when couples get out there and protest Scientology together. It's so romantic. It is the new date night, people. It is the new date night. Grab some lunch, grab some dinner, grab the one you love, right? Get out there and protest Scientology together. It's very bonding. It's very bonding. That's why my Tony and I have uh, picked it up as our new date activity to protest Scientology together. Check it out. You're going to see a disturbing number of elderly people. And again, earlier in this video, we talked about how disturbing that is, that uh, there's just so many. And I worry about elder abuse. That's where the concern comes from. Not to mention taking all of their money. What's in that bag? It looks like he's clearing, carrying clothes or something. And is that guy Amish? Maybe it's just the hat. It has to just be the hat because, well, multiple reasons. <laughs> but let's see. Um, Amish tech. Yeah, declared Dave. Anyways, I'm going to go look for an answer to that. Okay, here, maybe here's one by the boobologist. Cincinnati is on the border between Ohio and Kentucky. Even the airport for Cincinnati is in Covington, Kentucky. Okay, I thought it was something like that. That is very confusing. And that's why it's called the Greater Cincinnati Org, but it's located in Kentucky. Okay, it just seems to be very confusing for things like that. In, I mean, I can't be the only one confused by this. Kimberly, yes, Cincinnati crosses the bridge of the Ohio River, then it becomes Florence, Kentucky. That is so interesting. So that means that if I were to visit the Cincinnati org, I could just hop, skip, and a jump right over. Oh, I guess it would be in Kentucky. So I could visit two states at one time. I will have to remember that. That is very interesting. Vestige of bees. That's right. He looks Amish by the clothes and the hat, right? I was wondering too. Jen Nelson, thank you very much for gifting five Scientology Life After Occult memberships. Hip, hip, hooray. My friends. Very fun. Very fun. I don't know if you guys caught, we did a couple or I did one. I did a members only video before the live stream yesterday with my grandson, Oliver, who had spent the night and Oliver, Oliver and I did a video for everybody that you can see on the channel, but on the members only one we did, Oliver, I had to go, he started pinching me because I wasn't wearing green and it was St. Patrick's day and I had to go run and grab my earrings. So Oliver just took over the stream for a while. I still need to go back and watch it because I'm just going to assume it was all fine, <laughs> but it was hilarious. The kid just cracks me up and we did it right before the live. He wanted to keep going. Okay. We got to go over now and talk about Jeff at PTFs for life. He was in Vancouver and a Scientologist was in a vehicle that he hit him with. Uh, also, before I forget today, if you're watching this on Monday, I'm going to do an interview with PTS for life with Jeff at 12 p.m my time, 12 p.m. Central time. So look for that. Catch it on the replay if you need to, if you need to. But if you can make it live today, 
hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell, because I will get out a notification after this about it. And I'm looking forward to it. And we're going to talk about this. Oh, we're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about what happened. I mean, I saw the video, so I know a lot of what happened, but I kind of want to get his perspective on it and see if he heard, if he learned anything more about it. And we are just going to grab a clip of it here, but the Scientologist pulled up onto the sidewalk outside the Vancouver org for some reason. And you know how it is. Scientology seems to think that they own all of the sidewalks and crosswalks and they can block them and halt pedestrian traffic and nothing is wrong with that. Let's take a look at what happened. You want to make sure to get on video that your uh, your staff member is in the crosswalk, parked illegally. What's that? I would never have driven up here. He's on the sidewalk. Back up. Get out of the fucking way. You're you, hey, you're assaulting me right now. You are touching me, Jack. You are touching me, Jack. Okay, guys, I just got hit by a car. Nathaniel, make sure you get this on video. I just got hit by a car. This is the license plate right there. I do believe they just backed up into him. Crazy. Got it. Do you condone illegal activity like that, Peter? And we got a good cam back. How does that make you feel, Peter? Are you uh, are you good about that? Do you feel good about that cam back? Does it feel good? Who is that in there? That wasn't police back there, was it? Hold on. Back up a little, yeah. Touching me, Jack. You are touching me, Jack. Is that yeah. the case? Yeah, for sure. Don't seem to respect laws of the Scientology, do you? Not very way to happiness, is it? I guess it isn't. Oh. No, I guess not. You seem like... Do not talk. Do not talk. That's what you've been told. Do not talk. You heard it right there. Do not talk. Do not talk to the suppressive person outside. Do not talk to the protester. Do not talk to the live streamer. Whatever it is, do not talk. Run them down with a car. Sure, that's fine. Back right up into them when you've got your car on a sidewalk and in the crosswalk. Back up into them with it. Sure, but don't talk to them. Do not talk. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah, the cops weren't there. Be kind. Yeah, I think those were Scientologists, possibly Sea Org members inside there. But seriously, do not talk. <laughs> we will teach you the communication skills to change your life, to open your flow so you can fully be clear and rid yourself of your reactive mind. And then you too cannot talk to anyone outside of Scientology. <laughs> Sign me up. Take my money. Oh, and we wonder, and they wonder why it's not working out, why they're not expanding, right? Oh, I just cannot with these people. We are going to take a quick look at uh, Geneva because this is super cool and weird at the same time. If you thought Scientology was weird just in the United States and Canada, I got news for you. It is weird all over the place. <laughs> this is uh, Freedom From Religion. He travels and he's been stopping in at multiple Scientology organizations all over, including Hawaii, which I particularly appreciated being that that is where I'm from. And I love that he shares these videos. Let's check it out. So I'm walking back by the org and it has a side door entrance. And it turns out that uh, you have to go around there, press a button, and then someone will let you in. And just as I was there, there was a woman who was going up to the door and pressing a button and I don't know how I didn't see this yesterday but this is this is how you how you know and so that that entrance is around this corner and I did not video like any identifying features of that woman there might be a, just a shot of her in the shadows 
And of course, if anyone were to come out, I would not film them. So, and there is a person there and I'm not going to film them. So, so I'm. So in Geneva, they're doing this weird side door tech where kind of like in St. Louis, where the door was chained and locked. It's like you go over, you ring this thing, but then you scurry along the side and you go in that way, but you can't get in through the front. It's just weird. It's weird. It's so weird. God, it's just, I know I keep saying that. And after 35 years in Scientology, you would think I would not find that much weird about Scientology. That says a lot, people. <laughs> that has to tell you a lot about the rabbit hole you can go down with just how weird Scientology is, truly. 100%. I mean, we've got Poe on the go being followed in clear water and kind of in a half ass way to Scientology. This, this, these locked doors, secret entrances, it is just getting bizarre. <laughs> and I got to admit, it does make it a little more entertaining. A lot of this is hard to stomach. That's why I like to share the truth about Scientology and things like these interviews I do where we're going to get into the weeds. You want to know what mind control looks like? We're going to show you very exact examples of it because that will be burned into your head and you will never forget why Scientology is a cult. And it is icky, but it needs to be known. That's why when we can bring some balance with some of the like, oh, this police officer's operating Thetan level eight, look at that on the car. I think it's just some good balance. I don't know if you need it. I need it. So if nothing else, we're doing it for me and my mental well-being because this stuff is just outright crazy. So what do we know? We know that today we're going to have PTS for Life. Jeff, who got backed into by that truck there, driven by a Scientologist while blocking the sidewalk and having the vehicle up on the curb. We're going to talk to him. So we're going to find out more about that. We are also going to talk about a huge event happening in Canada that is coming up for Scientology. And Jeff has all the tea on that. And in case you want to go and protest there, he is going to have information about it, that as well. So we're going to share it. If you see something, people say something. Natalie at lifeafteroccult.com. Send me an email. Send me a timestamp. Send me a clip of something. Make sure you tell me what I'm looking at it. I appreciate it so much. And it truly helps me. Do not assume someone already sent it to me. Sometimes I'll get multiple emails about one thing and that's great because it tells me it's what you guys want to talk about. Once in a while, there'll be a little nugget somewhere that gets sent to me that somebody thought, oh, for sure you've seen this and I didn't. So send it, always send it, always send it. And I appreciate you and thank you all so much for doing that. Oh, Mary Reno says she saw a vague attempt at hedge tech there too. <laughs> I'm telling you, they are like, it is just next level weirdness. It is getting so weird. And I got a feeling that it's just going to be stranger. If you go down below in the description of this video, you're going to find a link to Jessica Palmadessa's petition on change.org to help revoke Scientology's tax exempt status. That link's in there. Check it out. Share it. Everything you guys can do to share these videos, whether it's through making short, sharing it on other platforms is really appreciated because it gets the word out and the word is getting out. One of the biggest things for me that it does is it gets it in the algorithm of Scientologists because we all know, right? If you're talking about anything, <laughs> you're using your phone to Google stuff with e which even Scientologists do. And it could just be the address of the org that you're going to. It gets, it's like, oh, you want to see Scientology content. When there is short form content, long form content about Scientology, that's going to get end up in their feeds. And we know it is because they're seeing it. And for some of them, it is the last bit that they needed to know with certainty that they are not the only ones feeling like Scientology is a cult or feeling like something is wrong, like they shouldn't have these financial demands. They're seeing that more and more. So please like the video, share it, get them out, whatever you can do to support the different channels that get the word about, about Scientology. I appreciate it so much. And I'm going to keep you guys posted on our trip, on our plans to go to Clearwater and go to Flag so that uh, we too can protest Scientology there. I can't wait to go back. I haven't been to Flag in years. In years, how long? It's been a long time. So I'm excited about it. And I'm mostly excited to meet everybody out there surrounded by Scientology to meet George and Lori Plays and Cheryl Farrell and, and Spit, Clearwater, everybody. 
everybody. And I love that that community is growing. So thank you, everybody. Keep an eye out later on today for my interview. Catch it on the replay if you need to. And in the meantime, just get out there and have the most amazing cult-free day.